In this tech tip, we'll cover how to create piping routes in SOLIDWORKS using a combination of automatic and manual routing techniques. The very first thing I'll need to do is enable the SOLIDWORKS routing add-in, which is available in SOLIDWORKS Premium licenses. Once the add-in is loaded, I can access the Piping tab of the Command Manager. You'll notice that there are several methods available for starting a route. Alternative methods such as starting from a point are covered in the full routing training course, but in this case we'll focus on the most commonly used method to initiate a route, drag and drop. I'll start by navigating to my design library, choosing the routing folder, piping, and then the flanges that I want to use. I'll zoom in on the mating flange of the equipment and drag and drop the new flange, being sure to let it auto size before releasing the mouse button and then confirming the size in the pop-up. I'll review the route properties to make sure they match my desired settings for things like bend radius and whether to use formed bends or separate elbows, and then click the check mark. At this point, the route assembly is created and we see a pipe stub or short pipe length on the screen, which serves as a starting point for the route. Now, without leaving the route, I'll pan over for the equipment I want to route to and drag in an additional fitting, which produces another stub. Then I'll right click the endpoint of one stub and choose the auto route command and then left click the endpoint of the other stub. Multiple possible solutions can be cycled through using right click on the mouse, and then left clicking to accept the desired solution. I'll exit the auto route command, but note that I'm still editing the route as you can tell by the visible sketch on the screen. If I expand the feature tree, you'll see that the only contents of the route assembly are the flanges that I dragged in. Once I exit the route sketch, additional components and parts appear for the elbows and pipes respectively, and the pipes also feature cut length information. At this point, I'm not editing the route, but I am still editing the route assembly. To exit fully back to the top level assembly environment, I would need to exit edit component mode. Then when I want to return to editing the route, simply editing the route assembly is usually not sufficient. I would want to make sure I right click on the route itself and choose edit route to edit its underlying sketch. Then I can drag in an additional flange for another tank that I'd like to tee into the existing line. This time I'll use manual routing techniques by dragging out the pipe stub of the line to be longer, and using regular sketch line tools to connect it with an additional segment. Route sketches are 3D, so they take some getting used to if you haven't done much 3D sketching. You can hit the tab key to cycle through which plane you're sketching parallel to, and it's definitely much easier if you can hook into existing geometry like we have here by connecting back to the other route line. Note that once I click to place the line, a fillet is automatically placed to accommodate an elbow based on the rules set in the route properties. The software also warns me that some kind of treatment, such as a penetration, would be required to join the two pipes. But in this case, I'll use a T instead, by browsing for the T's from my design library and dragging and dropping onto the junction, which should automatically orient the T. Finally, we can add dimensions to fully constrain the route. Once we exit, the route assembly is again updated with the relevant components and parts. To learn more about routing techniques, including custom component creation and many more tips, check out the course titled SOLIDWORKS Routing, Piping, and Tubing on the Solid Professor Learning Platform. If you enjoyed this content, let us know in the comments section below, and also let us know what type of content you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching.